Hi, everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, and welcome to this BCI podcast number 13, titled, Should We Add a Short Put to Our Collar Trades? Now, the reason why it's been suggested to me by some of our members to add a short put is to help fund the cost of the protective put aspect of the collar. So this video will kind of break it down and see if that's something that will benefit us in the long run. Now our strategy goal when we add a short put to a collar trade would be to fund the cost of the protective put. Now protective put is insurance on our trade. It protects us to the downside. Well, we may want to pay for that. And uh, if we do want to pay for it, we may want to pay less for it. Uh, and one way to do that might be to add a short put. Now, if we do reduce our cost of the protective put, then that means our return on capital will be higher. So that's the general philosophy behind adding this fourth leg to a collar trade. Now, let's start with the basics. What is a collar? Well, there's three aspects to a collar trade. In essence, it's a covered call trade with a protective put. So let's break down the three legs of the trade. First, we long the stock. First step is to buy the stock. Then we sell generally an out of the money call option. So we can sell a call option at a higher price than the current market value of the stock. <clears throat> now we add a protective put to put a floor on the trade to protect us on the downside against catastrophic share depreciation. So uh, we then purchase an out of the money protective put. And for puts out of the money means lower than current market value. If we were to set up a hypothetical example to explain the collar trade, it would be we buy a stock at 48, sell the out of the money 50 covered call, and purchase an out of the money 45 protective put. And that would then be the collar trade. Now let's uh, break this down with a real life example using NVIDIA Corp, which trades on the NASDAQ exchange under the ticker symbol NVDA. And when this uh, proposal was sent to me by one of our members, it was in October of 2018. So on October 9th of 2018, NVIDIA was trading at 264.24. So if we purchased 100 shares, uh, that's the price that we would pay. Now, if we were to sell the 265 covered call, also on October 9th, 2018, that generated $14.45. So now we bought the stock and sold the out of the money call option. That is our covered call position. So if we did nothing else, our trade would then just be a covered call. Now, on that same date, October 9th, the $250 strike put out of the money compared to the current market value of $264.24 would cost, it had an ask price of $8.20. So if we added this to our covered call trade, we would now have a collar trade. We'd have a long stock position, a short call position, and a long put position. That is the collar trade. Now, if we decided that we wanted to fund that protective put by selling a put, the example here that's from a real life option chain was that the 245, uh, again, out of the money put, uh, generated 665. That was the bid price since we're on the sell side of the put. Now, if we really looked at these four legs of the trade, on the upside, we have the covered call trade. We have the stock that was purchased at 264.24 and the covered call, which was sold out of the money at 265. On the downside, we have a protective put that we purchased for the 250 strike. And then we have a put that we sold, we're short the 245 put. So covered call on the upside, bear put spread, on the bottom side. But look at this now. The covered call trade was two legs. The collar trade was three legs. Adding a short put is now four legs. One of the reasons why 
I don't like this approach. All right, so uh, let's start with the covered call trade and break it down. And we're going to feed the information into the multiple tab of the Elman calculator. And for those of you watching, the blue cells on the left of the spreadsheet, you see 264, 24 is the cost of the shares, and the 265 strike generated $14.45, $1,445 per contract. That computes to a uh, five-week return on our option, time value return of 5.5%. And if NVIDIA moved up from 264.24 up to the 265 strike, there would be a small additional uh, premium of 0.3%. So there's an opportunity for a five-week return of 5.8%. That's just the covered call aspect of the trade. Now, if we purchase the protective put to then make that covered call trade a collar trade, let's feed that information into the BCI collar calculator. For those of you watching this podcast, the information is fed into the white cells at the top of the spreadsheet. And then in the uh, green field, the um, returns are automatically calculated. So here they are. The initial return on our option drops to 2.5%. 37% from 5.5. That's because of the cost of the protective put. Now, if the price moved up to the call strike, then the five week return would move from 237 to 2.65%. Now, if the price of the stock dipped below the strike price of the protective put, we would have a maximum loss of 3.02%. If the price dropped any further, it doesn't matter because we have that protective put in place. So you can see here the returns are pretty encouraging, especially considering that we're entering it with a stock that we have a bullish assumption on. Now, what about adding a short put uh, to the cost of the long protective put? What are the advantages? Well, by generating a premium of 665 on selling the put, the 820 cost of the protective put is now reduced to $1.55. So the initial calculations give a five week return now of 4.9%, which goes way up. It's almost double that without selling the uh, short put. But um, if we were taking a look at the uh, collar return, we would see that selling the put does have an advantage from a financial vantage point but we're also incurring risk to the downside. If we sell a 245 put at 665, that means our break even is 235.35 on that one position. So if the price of Nvidia should drop below that, we start losing money on that short put position. So we have additional risk. Now it's true that exit strategies will help mitigate but we're just talking beyond the scope of exit strategies now. Just in terms of initial trade structuring, you could see here that we're taking on additional risk. Now, the reason that we bought it in the first place was to reduce risk. So let's kind of summarize uh, the pros and cons of adding a short put to our collar trade. Uh, it will decrease the risk of our covered call trades uh, when we add a protective put, okay? But once we add the short put on top of that, that will then enhance the risk. So what's going on here? Are we looking to reduce risk or are we looking to enhance risk? We have to know what our strategy goal is. When we're doing a collar, our goal is to reduce risk. So it really doesn't make any sense to then sell a short put and increase our risk. We're also managing four positions. The covered call trade, we're managing two. The collar, we're managing three. We're, we had a short put, now we're managing four. That may be appropriate for some investors, but probably inappropriate for many. So you have to know what your personal risk tolerance is and what your level of sophistication is regarding trading options. You must weigh the pros and cons of each approach, and then you can make a decision as to what's right for you. So 
philosophically, risk reduction costs money. Anytime we buy an insurance policy, we're reducing risk and we're paying for it. Well, the same thing goes for the protective put. We want to reduce our risk to the downside, so we buy a protective put. That will reduce our overall returns. That's something we just have to accept with the collar. So that's, again, pros and cons of each approach. So if we decide we want to reduce risk, purchasing a protective put does make sense. I question the fact whether adding a short put to the trade will benefit us in the long run. For me personally, I would not do it. Now you saw the uh, Elman calculator in action. I know most of you probably already have a copy of it, but for those of you who don't, just log into our website, www.thebluecollarinvestor.com, and look at the top black bar on the top of the web pages and click on free resources, put in your email address, and you can download the calculator and its user guide and many other free resources uh, right to your computer or whatever device you're using. Now, for those of you interested in the collar trade, we have several resources in our store. Our book, Covered Call Writing, Alternative Strategies, which was co-authored by uh, me and Barry Bergman, the BCI Managing Director. Uh, section two of that book is dedicated to the collar trade. We also have an online streaming DVD program dedicated to the collar, along with a downloadable workbook. And of course, our BCI collar calculator. All these items are found in the BCI store. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, BCI podcast number 13, should we add a short put to our collar trade? I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and most importantly, I hope you benefit from it. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody. <laughs>